Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the Support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So next up in stage two, we're going to be converting mevalonate into isopentenyl pyrophosphate, or IPP. So stage two IPP synthesis. So we're going to start off here with mevalonate, and we're going to turn it into 5-phosphomevalonate, which basically just has a phosphate group attached to this, this OH group at the 5 carbon here. So that's going to, that phosphate is coming from an ATP, so an ATP going to an ADP here, and that is going to be catalyzed by a kinase, right, because kinases add phosphates from ATP or GTP to whatever it is they're adding it to, and in this case it's adding it to mevalonate, so it's mevalonate kinase. Okay, that should make some sense there. Once we have that, we're going to take 5-phosphomevalonate and turn it into 5-pyrophosphomevalonate, which basically just has uh, another phosphate group attached there at that 5-carbon. So uh, again, we're going to have an investment of ATP. ATP comes in, AT ADP comes off, and another kinase will be catalyzing this. So in this case, though, it's phosphomevalonate kinase because it's as acting on a phosphomevalonate. So, so far, so good, makes some sense, not too bad. Next up, we have 5-pyrophosphomevalonate, and we're going to convert it to 3-phospho-5-pyrophosphomevalonate, which basically just has a phosphate group attached to the DOH group on the third carbon. And so again, another phosphate will be coming fr from an ATP. And in this case, though, the enzyme catalyzed in this reaction has a little bit of a confusing name. Mevalonate 5 pyrophosphate decarboxylase. The mevalonate 5 pyrophosphate part makes sense because we're talking about 5 pyrophosphomevalonate that it's acting on. But the decarboxylase part doesn't make sense until you look at this next step because this enzyme kind of catalyzes both of these steps at once. It adds that phosphate and it also catalyzes a decarboxylation step where we'll actually lose this carboxyl group here as a carbon dioxide. So here we make this 3 uh, this 3 phospho 5 pyrophosphomevalonate, and then we're going to get rid of that uh, carboxyl group as a carbon dioxide, as well as we're going to lose that, um, that phosphate group, the phosphate group on the third carbon. Um, and then we have our product here, the isopentenyl pyrophosphate, which is IPP. Okay. So now that we have this, that's basically that's basically it, right? We've, we've made IPP. However, um, IPP is not the only uh, molecule that we'll need before we can actually get to stage three. This IPP needs to be converted, or at least some of them need to be converted to dimethyl allopyrophosphate, or, or DMAPP. And that's because uh, this DMAPP is actually going to be necessary for the condensation reactions that follow. Um, so it's not just IPP that's going to be this 5-carbon unit that we're going to piece together to make squalene in, in, in stage 3. It's not the only isoprene unit. So these guys are going to be our two different isoprene units. And isoprene, of course, looks like this. It's a 5-carbon unit that is that we're going to basically going to use to link together to make our squalene. And the reaction that, that uh, I summarize this is IPP to DMAPP is very cleverly named IPP isomerase. <laughs> so once we have IPP and DMAPP, we can have the, the condensation reactions that follow to give us squalene in stage three. Speaking of which, I'll hopefully see you there in the next video. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.